All right, next letter. This is from initials J T, um, first and last name there, from Brashear, Texas. This is uh, February the 11th of 2020. Um, is the postmark date on it. So we're going to read this letter. It's a fairly long one here, but uh, it's an interesting thing that this brother went through. Um, Mon Monday, February 10th, 2020. Hello, Brother Brian. I'm still trying to learn how to use this word pad, but it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. I can relate. I pray that you and yours are well. I would like to tell you my testimony. I've never told it to anyone. I was raised Pentecostal as a child. I remember that there were two ladies that danced up and down the aisle every Sunday night speaking in tongues, which only confused me. I was only five or six at the time. I know now by studying that it was all a show. There was no interpreter. Um, and I don't believe that tongues are for our dispensation. After that, I grew up a lot like you, wild as a March hare, fast cars, motor motorcycles, and fast women. As a teen, I quit school and went to work for my uncle at his delivery service. He was a saved man, and he always told me that I was going to bust hell wide open. You know, I didn't listen to him. I went on drinking and getting married. I married my first wife when I was 18. She was 16, and she only married me to get away from her overly strict mother. Her mother would... Uh, and he signed to let her get married. Oh, not sign, excuse me, not sign um, to let her get married. So without telling me, she told her mother that she was pregnant, while, which was a lie. So her mother let us get married. I was still drinking and running wild, and my wife was cheating on me with every guy uh, she met. That lasted three years, and we divorced. Then two years later, I met another girl, and we got married. We were together one year, and we broke up. At that time, she went to work as a stripper. Um, we were still married, and I would go to the strip club and watch her dance. She would always want me to go to her, her house and wait for her to get home, and like the fool I was, I did it. When she got home, she had brought the security guard from the club home with her. I think she thought I would get mad and attack him, and he would shoot me, but I, did, I didn't. I just told them to have fun, and I, and I got into my 66 Corvette, which she had bought for me, and went home, and we divorced. And five years later, I married my third wife that was a bartender at a club that I hung out. Um, we stayed married five years. We had a baby girl. I was 30 years old at the time. I dearly loved my baby girl, but her mother was insanely jealous of me, and we divorced. A couple of years later, I got an apartment in a high-class new complex. That's where I met my fourth wife. She was the manager of the complex. She was the first woman that I had ever dated that went to a church regularly, she had been converted from being a Catholic to being a Baptist. I know now that they are uh, that they are close to being the same. Yeah, in many ways. We dated for a year and we got, and got married. Then we bought a brand new 28 square hundred 2800 square foot home. This is when my life changed. I loved her dearly. I quit smoking and drinking, and we went to church regularly. But I wasn't saved. The preacher came to our house and did the Romans Road to Salvation with me, but I didn't think I was saved because I didn't feel saved. I know now that it's not about feelings, but I got baptized and one Sunday night at the end of the service, the preacher was asking for people to come to the altar for salvation. I was listening to him and the singing and all of a sudden I started crying uncontrollably. His son came to me and started praying. He never said a word to me. I was crying and shaking and waiting for him to say something to me, but he didn't say a word, and after a few min moments it passed. But I look back now, and I think the Lord was working on me at that time, but I didn't understand what was happening to me because I was too young in the faith. We started soul winning a month or two later and talking to lost people, as I was myself, the blind leading the blind, so to speak, or so to say. The next thing that I'm going to tell you I never told anyone before we had finished soul winning and I had got a couple to comment to come to church that next Sunday. They just said that they would come to church. They didn't accept the Lord, but as I was driving back to my house by myself, I was thanking God for these people, those people saying that would come to church. I was sitting at a signal and all of a sudden a calm came over me and I felt like I loved everyone in the world. To this day, I still don't know uh, why I felt that way. 
We had been in church religiously for three years, and I was happy. I was happy as I had ever been in my life. I thought I would really get saved one day because we were in church and I was studying the KJV Bible. But that's when the devil attacked me, attacked out of nowhere. My wife called me at work and told me she had packed and left me. We had never even had a cross word. I loved her that much. It almost killed me when she told me. I begged her to talk it out with me, but she would not even talk with me. I got a friend of hers to get her to meet with our pastor, and then I met with him later and asked him if she had left me for another man. If I live to be 100 years old, I will never forget what his, his answer was. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. <laughs> Real sensitive there. Brother, I can't believe that. I stayed in the church for a couple weeks, then I moved in with my mother because I could not afford the house by myself. I was so down that I almost committed suicide. I had my 44 Magnum pistol cocked and at my head, but something stopped me. I quit going to church and went back to the world of sin. I got married four more times, and I got six DWIs. I was looking at a year in the penitentiary for the last one, but I paid my way out of it. it cost me $10,000. That is when I moved to the country, but I was still drinking, but at home, I didn't drive drunk. My daughter and her husband lived with me for 12 years. Then they divorced, and I was alone again. One night I got on my knees and asked the Lord to help me find a church to go to. I know now that that was the wrong thing to, uh, to ask, but at that time, I didn't know. The next day was Sunday, so I went to find a church. I tried a Southern Baptist church, but the preacher was teaching out of the NIV. As lost as I was, something told me this was not the right church for me. Yeah, it's amazing. I just got to just stop here for a minute. Um, you know, I've, I've known lost people, and they, they can't stand these new versions. It's so funny, you know, and... and somebody that's really looking for the Lord and they just, they're, they're doing things and sinning ignorantly and they, they're just, they're being lied to by churches and whatever else. I've seen some of these people, you try to read to them out of the NIV and they, no, no, they, they, yeah, something doesn't sound right there. <laughs> I mean, myself, personally, my wife, I know over here, she's raising her hand. Yeah. I mean, she was given an NIV. Uh, just something doesn't seem right. I was given an NIV when I was 10 years old. Had it for 15 years. And it was always, oh, read it and study it and try to memorize it. And I never could. I remember one uh, mission trip we went on and it was I was supposed to memorize so many verses from the NIV. And I had a terrible time doing it. I just couldn't memorize it. So, interesting. But continuing here with the letter. Um, the next Sunday I found a fundamental Baptist church. I joined and started to read my Bible. King James Version. After a year or so, I started to go to the jail with my preacher, but something told me that the guys in jail were not saved after they heard the Romans wrote and prayed. There was no repentance. As we were leaving the jail one night, I asked my preacher, what, are, what about repenting of your sins? He told me that one day they would repent. <laughs> I had been listening to you on YouTube for about two years at that time. One night I was listening to you preach about salvation, and I got on my knees and repented of my sins. I started talking to my friends about the Lord, how to be saved, and my best friend told me I was getting too zealous uh, about talking about the Lord. You know, it, it, it's the thing, it's so amazing. You know, you're with all these other Christian friends, you know, Christian friends, and all of a sudden you get genuinely born again and you start to really want to talk about the Lord and you talk about the Bible, it's all you want to say. And, and they, they say, yeah, just, you know, you're getting a little bit too nutty here. And you're, you know, don't talk so much about the Bible. Let's leave God out of t the conversation here. And you think, what? <laughs> well, I can relate to that. Um, I asked her, how can you be too zealous about talking about God? I've tried to talk to my other friends and family about salvation, but they don't want to hear it. Of course, the devil is telling me I'm not saved, but I refuse to listen to that. Because I know that I am trusting in what Jesus did on the cross for me and the world, and I have repented of my sins and live my life the best I can for the Lord. I know I'm not perfect, but I love Jesus with all my heart. God bless you and yours, brother. Initial J. Wow. Oh, if the Lord hadn't saved me, I would have probably ended up very similar to that. Um, you know, there there were times I was trying to get into relationships, you know, and uh, and the Lord just put a stop to it. Um, I remember the one time there was a girl from my high school, 
and uh, definitely not saved very wicked. And, and uh, she was interested in me in high school, wanted me to take her to the prom. And and I didn't because I was more into, you know, four-wheelers. I had a Yamaha Banshee back in high school. You understand, understand ATVs. You understand what it means. It was modified too, so, you know, real fast. But And I just, I don't, I'm not going to spend money on going to a stupid prom and whatever else. But I got out of high school and I was fast cars, fast motorcycles, just like this brother. And I thought about her and I, and I knew where she worked and I thought, yeah, I'm going to go and, you know, ask her out and whatever else. And because I knew that she would be willing to fornicate and whatever. And, and I went there and, and I asked somebody and is she here today? And they said, Oh no, she, she quit. And I thought, huh. You know, at the time it was just, Oh man, that, that kind of stinks. And then I look back and I think, Oh God, thank you for sparing me. Just amazing. Um, another little note here in with the letter. Hello, bro. I finally figured out how to write and, and print a letter on my computer. As I had told you, I have tremors in my right hand and can't write. Um, I finally got your page to work on YouTube. I've been watching your videos for years, but I could not get into your site to share with other Christians. Just recently found out that I have a malignant tumor in my rectum. I ask that you pray for me. They are going to have me take a stress test before they will operate. I'm 72 years old. I pray that I can get through the test. Okay, there are many things that I wanted to talk to you about, but I'm at a loss for of words for now. God bless you and yours, Brother Jay. So um, certainly we have been praying for you on that, but uh, please look into nutritional therapies for uh, curing cancer. There's plenty of them. Um, vitamin B17, I think, is a great one. Uh, that you can get from apple seeds and from the seeds of apricots. Um, so, World Without Cancer is a good book on the whole cancer thing. Um, you know, it's illegal in America, you know, to be treated with B17, laetrile treatment. You have to go to Mexico for it. I think there's one in Germany as well or something, but um, there's other ways. There's other nutritional type of things. Um, you want to cut sugar out of your diet. There's you know, do the research in it. I strongly encourage people to do research when you have health issues. So that is going to be it for the letter. Um, young people, take heed to the words of that older man there, 72-year-old man, and, you know, just going to have some fun, just going to go out and, and live wild. The old saying goes, a wild as a March hare. Um, don't, uh, don't fall for the things of the world, Okay. Fast cars, fast women, fast motorcycles, whatever you want to put in there in that category, it'll never satisfy you. And that's why I did my vehicle testimony at one point in time. And, and uh, you know, you just look for that next thrill. I got this motorcycle. Well, I'd like to get a faster one. I got that four-wheeler. I got this truck. I got that car. I got this. I, and you just continually look for that next thrill, the faster, the more speed, the the higher jump, the farther jump, the, the, if I could just climb that bigger hill and I could, you know, and, and just, and then the thing of relationships, old oh, brother, you can get into some really bad relationships. Um, the things of this world will never satisfy you, right? It's about salvation, getting to know your creator. Okay. So that's going to be it for answering that letter. And we will go on to the next one.